Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. Today is going to be a good one. We're going to talk about three things that you might do that actually drive your dog crazy. And truthfully, I don't think we think about these types of things enough. Sometimes as humans, we just think what we're doing is okay because we're humans and we're smart. But generally speaking, there are some things that we might be doing to slash around our dogs that actually they don't enjoy. So let's get right to it. First things first, if you do some of these things, that's okay. We all have done things that probably make our dogs a little bit unhappier or maybe bother them. And you know what? You might hear these things and think, I'm going to keep doing them anyways. And that's okay. That's your decision. But it's good to know that these things can cause our dogs issues and just make them not make them uncomfortable, basically. So the very first thing, and you might get push, I might get pushback on this one. Because some people think, no, I do this and I know my dog loves it, but many dogs do not like being hugged. The act of you coming up, you know, putting your dogs, your arm around your dogs and, you know, it can be very uncomfortable for them because they can feel constricted. You know, you think in, if, if for yourself, if someone were to come up to you and just start, you know, kind of hanging on to you and you couldn't feel like you could get away or that you didn't know where you could go, it might be a little uneasy for you. And for our dogs, it's the same, you know, especially just generally getting around and being in their personal space, especially near their face is something that can be frustrating for them and it can make them uncomfortable and can lead to things like bites or them getting uh, reactive or, you know, just generally feeling uncomfortable. So hugging your dog while you may love it, they might not. So it's important to keep an eye on their body language. If they're, you know, trying to turn their head away or their whole body away, or they start licking their lips or kind of giving you the side eye, those can be signs that they're uncomfortable and you would want to stop. The second thing that people, humans, us pup parents do that our dogs do not enjoy and probably thoroughly hate is not letting them sniff. I've talked about this before. I understand that as a pup parent, you have a lot going on and you're busy. And sometimes the, the part of your day where you're taking your dog out for a walk, you might be in a rush. And you know what? That happens. That, that is totally normal. We're all humans with busy schedules. But too often I see people getting frustrated at their dogs for wanting to sniff or wanting to stop and explore certain, certain parts on their walk or just wanting to explore. And at the end of the day, if you're going to take the time to take your dog out on a walk, wouldn't you want to let them sniff? Wouldn't you want to let them take in their surroundings and have a thorough, enjoyable, enriching experience? You know, taking your dog on a walk and not letting them sniff is kind of like going into a shopping store, you know, pick your favorite store to go shopping. And, you know, someone's there pulling your arm along the whole time and, and you know, you, you stop and you say, oh, I really like that shirt. I want to check it out, see if they have my size, you know, see if it fits. And they're just pulling you along and you get to look at everything and you get to see it and kind of get glimpses of the things that you would like to understand and explore. But then someone's just dragging you away from those items that you want to check out. That's really kind of what we do to our dogs sometimes. And the problem with it is not only is your dog going to get frustrated and potentially be more likely to pull you on leash because you're not giving them any freedom or any opportunity to explore, but you know, it also just devalues the walk. You know, a walk is a great time, not only for physical exercise and to go to the bathroom, but also to just work their nose. We've talked about it before, enrichment, sniffing, smelling the world around them. It's so, so important. Our dog's sense of smell is up to, you know, 10,000 times stronger than ours. And they gain information and understand things about their world around them through their nose and through sniffing. So try to let your dog sniff more. I promise it'll help them mentally. The third thing that us pup parents do that dogs don't like often, and don't tell my wife I'm going to say this, but dressing them up. I know that we have had blogs on the Pupford website even about costume ideas for your dogs. And, you know, you see it on social media. And here's the thing. Just like with these three things that I'm talking about, like every other topic I've covered, it might not apply to you directly. It might not be the case for you and your dog. 
But generally speaking, unless you very, very carefully and very slowly and effectively introduce getting dressed up to your dog, there's a high probability that they actually don't like it. I know people want to get cute pictures and post on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is, or just have cute pictures for themselves. But I think you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it if my dog is uncomfortable? Because again, especially with things like costumes or, you know, putting even boots on your dog or, or shoes or any of those types of things, yeah, your dog might be fine with it and not care. But for some dogs, it's very threatening for them, especially like the costumes where you have to put it over their head. That act for many dogs can be very concerning, you know, just like why you're supposed to warm your dog up to putting a collar on or a harness on. It's the same thing for dressing them up. And, and, you know, sometimes I see dogs that get dressed up in costumes or jackets or shoes, and you can tell that they're visibly not enjoying it and uncomfortable. And, you know, you got to do what's best for your dog. And, you know, you know, if you're, for example, if, if you think your dog really needs boots because of the climate that you're in or whatever, great. But if you're just doing it for the looks and your dog doesn't enjoy it, is it really worth it? Is it really, really worth doing that for your dog? Again, some signs to look out for. You know, my, my dogs, I've noticed like if they're in a situation where a jacket or something like they'll kind of go stiff, their body can get a little more rigid. Um, their tail might go more kind of flat and rigid as well. Licking their lips, turning their head away from you, you know, trying to paw off whatever it is. Those can be signs that your dog is uncomfortable. And at the end of the day, like I said, if you do these things, it's your decision and that's okay. But it's, I think it's important as pup parents to remember that. I think in my personal opinion, it's more important for our dogs to feel comfortable and feel safe than for us to get appeasement from them wearing shoes or a hat or, you know, some type of costume or a jacket or whatever it is. Right. So know your dog and most importantly, pay attention to the signs that they're giving you with their body language. They'll let you know if they're uncomfortable. So you know, take it slowly. And if they're uncomfortable, you don't have to keep going. You, you can stop and, and kind of work again through that. There's, we have plenty of articles on the Pupford website about desensitization and, you know, kind of counter conditioning. So you can look those up, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. I, I don't mean for it to come across as too negative. And again, if you, if you are, if you've done these things or do these things, it's okay. I just, it's just some food for thought as to thinking of, you know, how, do, how do we keep our dogs feeling more comfortable and more at ease and, and, less in situations that might make them uncomfortable because when your dog's already in an uncomfortable situation and then you add in more potential, you know, bad things for them, you can get what's called trigger stacking where, you know, it just builds and builds and builds and builds and there's too much and then they might snap and they might, you know, snap, like literally snap at another dog or a human or bite. You know, th there are things that when they add up and they get stacked on top of each other, sometimes it can be too much for our dogs to handle. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you find value in this podcast. If you have, please share it with friends. Thank you for everyone who's leaving reviews. If you have not, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And other than that, we will catch you on the next episode.